Hey guys, Compside Girl 523 here, and we're back today with another tutorial. So first things first, quick update. I am working on another map. Um, it is currently in the process of being built. I don't want to say too much about it because I'm still trying to work out the name and everything. Um, I won't be able to stream yet me building it uh, due to the fact that the part from my computer still has not come in yet. Once it does, then I will be able to fix my laptop and be able to have internet connection that will actually allow me to stream. Uh, and yeah, so today we are going to go over customization in the sense of custom characters, custom items, and also custom textures. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is custom characters. So sometimes you don't want to just spawn in a mob using a spawn egg. In this case, you're going to want to spawn in a custom character. To do this, you use this um, command right here, the summon command. So it's summon Minecraft and the mob name will go here. Coordinates you want it to be summoned at. This also can be relative coordinates, so you use a little tilde notation that I mentioned before and any NBT tags that go with it. So some common NBT tags that are used across most mobs are silent, and that's either true or false, so you either just have one after it or zero. Invulnerable, meaning that so long as you are in survival or adventure, they cannot be um, killed. Uh, no AI, meaning it won't move, it'll just stand there, not do anything. Uh, persistence required means that even if the chunk it is the mob is in is unloaded, it will not disappear when it reloads the chunk in. It'll still be there. Uh, custom name visible is so you can see the custom name and also custom name to give it a custom name. So these are all true and false and this is the only one that requires you to put in a uh, text string. Now one of the more specific mobs that I'm going to go over is the villager because the villager you can do some special things with. Uh, so the villager, you can specify a profession for the villager. So uh, for this, where it has a little, or I have a little, uh, you can call it a hashtag or pound sign, depending on what you call that. Um, you can use one of these numbers. So if you want a farmer who has the brown robe, uh, it would be zero. Librarian, which is the white robe. The priest, the blacksmith, the butcher, or the general one, which is the new green one. Um, you use just this digit here in the spot there. If you want a villager that does not share, like, does not trade, I should say, does not trade at all, you want to have this where it says offers and have the offers empty. So no matter what villager you have, even if it's a farmer or a blacksmith or any of them, it does not have to be a general villager. It will not have any trades. And if you want the villager to have custom trades that you design, uh, you use this. So it's offers and then you have recipes. So you have the buy and the sell. So buy is what you need to give the villager and sell is what they're giving you. Uh, what you sell can also have special tags. For example, you could have like a pickaxe that can break stone for like adventure mode and stuff like that. And yeah, so one more thing with uh, mobs. So certain mobs can have armor, as you know, you can spawn in zombies, or even in when you're playing zombies and skeletons can occasionally spawn in with armor. You can also specify what kind of armor and hand items they have. So here we have summon, Minecraft, and then it would be the mob. In this case, I have a zombie there. Coordinates. Then you have armor items. You have what goes on the feet, legs, chest, and head. Then if you have hand items, it's the right hand and then the left hand. Now you can also spawn characters in and then later equip items to them. Uh, you can do that using your place item, except you use at E here instead of at P. Um, you could also do this to apply uh, armor to players as well using at P. And you can say what you want on their uh, the helmet slot, the chest plate slot, the leggings, or the feet. And yeah, so I'll have all these in the first comment and I'll pin the first comment on the video. Um, I actually can't put them in the description because there's restrictions with brackets in the description. Um, so yeah, so those kind of like the basic overview of the commands and now I will show you some examples of those commands in Minecraft. Alrighty, so first things first, I'm going to spawn in a custom named uh, entity. So I'm going to spawn in Filbert. So you may recognize the name if you played the tester. Filbert is the little uh, baby pig that I had spawned in in um, Sam's base. So let's spawn in Filbert. So spawn in Filbert. All I do is I have Minecraft pig. Coordinates I spawn out, no AI because I don't want to move around. And here I have another tag called age. Age can be used to summon in baby animals or 
Oh, yeah, baby animals, basically. So you have age, and I'd use a negative number. And if you use a negative number, then that's how many, I believe that's how many ticks, if I remember correctly, that um, they will remain a child once it hits zero, then they grow up. If you wanted to stay a baby animal, you can have a command block running that's constantly setting their age to a negative number, so they'll always stay little. Uh, but yeah, here's Filbert. So now I'm going to let Filbert roam around. You want to use entity data. So anytime you want to change an NBT tag of a entity, um, you want to use entity data, and you can use either the relative coordinates or the name. So his name is Filbert. Remember, the name has to has to be one solid word. It cannot have any spaces in it. I'll do no AI false, and he should. Let me do that. Let me get a button. I didn't want to have the button on there previously. And now he can move around. So let's move Philbert right out of the way. Hey, Philbert. All right. So I'll let Philbert roll him around. So now I'm going to spawn in a villager that has no traits. Um, I have some of the uh, other tags in there, like persistence and uh, profession. So we're just going to spawn in this villager. You see in the bottom left hand corner in the chat what a, the whole command is. So here's a villager. He has no trades. No matter what, I am right clicking and I cannot open the GUI to trade with him because he has no trades. So I'm going to change this to the coordinates. Let me just pull up the coordinates real quick in the chat so I can see them. Alrighty. Please don't go away, chat. 772, 104, there we go. So now anyone I use can, so now, ta-da, that villager now has AI. So I'm just going to teleport the villager away from there for now. So I can spawn in the other villagers. And also the zombie. Oh, nope, he's just going to move. That works too. <laughs> Alrighty, so now this villager is going to have custom trades. So if I do that, this villager this is going to be kind of a longer command. It has the different profession. Uh, this one is going to buy bread and give you an iron sword that can destroy a cobweb. And the... the it's going to reward XP false, meaning when you trade with him, he will not give you XP. Uh, when you're doing adventure maps, sometimes you don't want to get the, the player to get experience from doing different things. You can set that there. Um, well, from trading, at least. And you can also, for this one, has coal. It's going to give you an iron pickaxe that can destroy Minecraft stone. And it also gives you an enchantment level item. So, let's spawn him in. So here's our special villager. Three bread for an iron sword uh, that can break. It's supposed to be web. I believe I mistyped that. One second. Did I type cobweb instead of web? Yes, I believe I typed cobweb instead of web. But in that case, I can show you on this one because I know this one I typed correctly. can break stone. So let me get some coal. That's three coal. So now, can break stone. This one has an enchantment level efficiency 1,000. If I just grab some stone, I go into. Can't break that any other way except with my special pickaxe. Alrighty, game mode. Alrighty. So that's an example of having, whoops, custom trades. So let's uh, allow him to move around as well. Uh, hopefully he'll move around. If not, then, whoops. You gonna move around or no? Something, yep, it will unlock other trades. But let's see, if he'll, if he'll move, if not, then I will just teleport them somewhere. All right, last but not least, I'm going to show you the custom equipment. So I really don't want him standing there. How did Filbert, never mind. Oh, yeah, that, that would do it. He's small enough. Okay. <laughs> oh, good, he moved. All right. 
So now we're going to spawn in a zombie. Now this zombie is already going to have items. Um, he's going to have iron boots and iron leggings, a chest plate, and a helmet. So let's spawn him in. Or no helmet. Yeah, but I named him Random. So as you can see, Random is, um, as you can see, our random zombie here has a different armor. If I wanted to change his armor, I could simply, one second, let me grab the code. Go down here, da, 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 right here. His name is Random. If I want to give him an iron helmet, ta-da, he now has an iron helmet. I could also change things he has on him. So, for example, chest plate can become an iron chest plate that's enchanted. So if I pull that command back up, you see I have enchant, the ID of the enchantment, and the level of the enchantment I want. So you could have custom mobs, they can create custom bosses. Now for him, since I don't want to turn AI on because he will go out to villagers, we're just going to do that. He has armor, so it takes a little longer. Alrighty. So, now let's talk about custom items. When it comes to custom items, usually it means that you're trying to either name an item or give a named item to a character, um, well not to a character, but to a player, or you want an item that can, in adventure mode, place, be placed on something, can destroy something, or even have special enchants, etc, etc. So, uh, to do each of those things, so if you want to give somebody a named item, use give at P, or um, you can use any of the entity items that you need. Uh, so like at A if there's more than one player. Uh, the item, item, number of items, the MBT number for like example if you have wool and you want a certain color wool, and then display, name, and then this is where you would put the name. If you want to give it lore, so like the text underneath the name of it, uh, you can give it lore as well. It's under display as well. Uh, for cam place on, you have a special tag, can place on, and you say what it can be placed on. Can break uh, would be can destroy. Uh, you could also do the same thing with can place on if it can be placed on more than one thing. Uh, you would have a list here. Uh, sometimes you don't want MBT tags to show. For example, if you want to use a potion and say it's something else. For example, if you have a potion and you want to say it's soda, we don't want to say that it's a swiftness potion because swiftness potion kind of looks like soda or pop, whatever you call it from wherever you're from. Uh, you can use what's called hide flags, and hide flags will hide that MBT data. Um, also, we have items with enchants. I showed you previously with the villagers how you had enchanted items. It's uh, ENCH, ID number, and the level number. These can be looked up um, online on the wiki. On the Minecraft wiki, just type in uh, enchantment IDs, and they'll give you a whole list. There's just too many to list here. Um, another custom item that you would usually want to uh, give a player is custom books. Um, this is how you actually can change the author of the book as well as put commands inside books. So if you want a book with no commands, I'm going to space this out here, uh, it would be just this. So title, author, you can specify the author. This is how you could have books that are not technically written by you. Uh, you just have pages. You can use this to go to a new line if you're typing. There's other ones listed online. You can look them up. There's a whole list. Uh, and then you just add more pages like so using this. Uh, if you want to use commands, it's slightly different. So when you go to pages, um, you have to do bracket, but you also have to do another set of brackets here. And then you have to actually list what you want, so like Command-1, and have a click event, kind of like I use in Telraw. When I did Telraw, I explained there was a click event. Same process. Again, I'll have these uh, posted in the comments, so it'll be easier, because a lot of this is kind of hard to see, because it's a lot of text and a lot of um, uh, escape characters. And yeah, but now I will show you these in Minecraft. Alrighty, we're back. <laughs> so first things first, I'm going to give a named item with lore. So I'm going to give myself a special gem. It's called special gem. If I go like this and hover over it, you see it has lore. The lore will be written in purple. It says a gem mined at y equals zero. Was it mined at y equals zero? No, it just spawned in by me. But that's something you can do to add information to items that are given to players. For example, if you want to tell a player, hey, this item can be used for something, you can put that in the lore and the player will see it in bright purple. Alrighty, so now we have cam place and cam break. So, 
This can be placed on concrete. I'm going to show you the command now in the chat. It's right here where it says command set. So you do the can place, can be placed on concrete, in, in this case any color concrete and can break. Uh, can break iron ore, stone, and coal ore. So now I'm going to go into adventure mode. So if I place this down, can't break it. And now I can break it. But now this one can't be placed down at all. So, in mode C, uh, I'll show you the can break, which is actually can destroy. So give iron pickaxe or whatever you want to give them. Can destroy iron ore, Minecraft stone, and coal ore. You can see I did the list there. All right, this one is hidden tags. Let's get rid of these. Oops. Hidden tags. So I'm going to give myself a luck potion, and it's called totally not a potion, and it says do not drink. And I'm going to hide the fact that it's a luck potion. So it's technically... A mystery potion. It doesn't tell you what type of potion it is, but it is a luck potion as you see from the command. Now I'm going to give myself an enchanted item. I'm going to give myself a diamond pickaxe called the Ore Finder. It's going to be an epic pickaxe, and I'm going to have an enchantment on it. There's two different enchantments I'm putting on it, and we'll see that once I spawn it in. You'll see the enchantments. Give myself efficiency 1000 and fortune 1000. I should probably get a lot of diamonds from that. <laughs> and it says epic pickaxe. Uh, so now up here we have custom books. Let's get rid of those. Regular custom, regular custom book. This is a book. This is a book. Yes, it is. No commands at all. You see, I can't click anything in here other than the arrows go from page to page. Now, if I want to do a custom book with commands, this is a teleport book. Here's a book of commands. So the first page, I didn't put any commands on it. Second page, I did. So I did up. Teleport it up here and down. So it's kind of like an elevator in a book. Um, I'll show you the command in chat now. So that's for the regular book. You see just the title. This is that. It's by anybody. Um, this is a book. Yes, it is. I use the new line character here and no commands. For this one, this one's a bit of a longer command. Uh, where does it start? It's by a bookmaker teleport. See, the first page, I didn't have to put the uh, square brackets around it because it is just text but once I start putting commands I have to put square brackets around it and you see I listed the commands there alrighty so that's all the all of the custom items now to talk a little bit about designing custom textures alrighty so now I'm going to talk about how to create custom textures so when it comes to custom textures, you need one thing first. You need to have the default resource textures. It's not necessarily called this when you actually get the file. Uh, there's many tutorials online about how to download these. Basically, you have to like unpackage Minecraft and get the textures out of it. Once you do, you'll get a folder like this. Um, you'll have the assets. This will be something you need to create. And you have to have a file specifically called this, pack.mc uh, meta. And I'm going to open this in Notepad so you can see it. Once my computer catches up with itself. Alrighty, so in here, this is the code you need exactly in this um, description. You can put whatever you want, but everything else should pretty much be the same. This is so that Minecraft can recognize your texture pack. Now, if I go back to here, you see I go in here, Minecraft, and then it has everything here. If you want to change textures, you go into textures, and you can pick what you need to change. Now, some things in Minecraft can be easily changed using a website. There's many websites out there that allow you to create custom textures. The one I use, I will also link in the description, is called Nova Skin. It's, also, it's a pretty common one. It's been known you could use it also to change your Minecraft skin, but they also allow you to use it to change um, different textures or blocks and such. And another type of editor you might want to have is a pixel editor, something that allows you to edit individual pixels. Uh, especially for entities, they can be a bit more difficult to edit uh, without a pixel editor. You can just use paint if you're really good with paint, go ahead and use it. Uh, but I use a different one online, there's a bunch of free ones online. I will link in the description the one I use because I can't remember the name of it right now. Uh, and yeah, so basically all you have to do is once you get a hold of this and you have created that one file I showed you, it's free reign. For example, if I go in here, let it load. There are a lot of blocks. As you can see, some of these would be harder to edit as one solid thing. For example, uh, let me type in 
sea lantern. Sea lantern, you see it's one long thing. To edit that can be kind of difficult. You might want to use a pixel editor because how a sea lantern works is each picture is just played. So they are slightly different from each other, and that's how you get like the movement on the sea lantern. So you might want to use a pixel editor for that one. But you can see you have all the blocks here. And you can see some blocks are used, some of these are used more than once for different blocks and stuff like that. And yeah, so that's for that. Let me go back to this. Talked about editing online. Another question that I got was how to create those custom images inside Minecraft. So like if you wanted to create a custom image on a map for like like when I have letters and stuff. Um, I use a map converter. So basically what I do is I create the image I want using usually paint or I'll use one of the online pixel editors. I design the picture I want and then I talk to my one playtester and he sent me uh, S&P Mike 23 sent me a link to where I can download a map, um, like a map converter. Um, I don't remember what the link was, but you can just look up map data converter. I'm pretty sure it was from the Minecraft forum, so it shouldn't be too hard to find. Basically, once you uh, save the picture as a .dat file, here I'll show you in one of my Minecraft files one sec. So here I am inside curtain call right now. So if I go into data, you see I have a dot dat file. So map zero you don't touch, but your first one you create for a custom will be map one, and then you have to save it as a dot dat file. And when you save it as a dot dat file, it will convert it into a small map inside Minecraft. So if you want like a bigger image, you would just cut that image into equal parts and then save them as separate items. So this goes in your data folder. So when you go into like um, your roaming data and you go into your Minecraft folder. Uh, you can go into your individual folders and find it under data. Now this works in 1.12. Uh, I do, um, I did hear that in 1.13 there are some things that are changing. Um, I don't know exactly what's changing, but there's going to be changes in where things are saved inside folders, so keep that in mind. This works for 1.12. Don't know if these are going to be saved in the same location or same folder in 1.13. Uh, just keep that in mind. <laughs> and yeah. Alrighty, that's pretty much it for customization. A uh, few things I want to say about uh, textures real quick. Um, have fun with the textures. It's fun to change the textures of things and kind of make custom looking blocks. Um, and I'm warning you when you do, it will take a few tries usually to get to look the way you want to because you have to remember you're looking at a flat 2D image and then when you go into Minecraft it becomes 3D. Uh, but it is kind of cool to see it go from a flat image to 3D. And yeah, so that's all I have to really say about customization. Uh, have fun with it. <laughs> Create some cool custom things in your world. And yeah, so that's all it for, that's it for now. Uh, I don't know when the next tutorial will be. I have to look and see what the next set of things I'm going to do. I did get some more requests for things, so I have to figure out how they fit in with everything. But yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And let me just go back to Minecraft so I can say thank you for watching. <laughs> I have the two villagers, I guess, chilling with me. So, and Filbert somehow ran off into the distance, and I don't know why. <laughs> so, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope this was helpful. If you do have any more questions uh, about anything with custom textures, feel free to let me know. Uh, so you, also, if you have any questions about anything I've gone over in previous videos, go ahead and ask me. If there's anything you haven't seen in my videos and you want me to explain, also feel free to let me know. And yeah, so I guess I will see you guys next time. Bye!